Hello, children. How are you all? Now it's time for us to recapitulate on uh, uh, what we have learned the previous day. Uh, we have learned about the characteristics of the particles of matter. What are the chief characteristics of the particles of matter? There are the spaces between the particles. There are spaces or intermolecular spaces between the particles of the matter. The next one, inter-particle uh, space, I should call. And the next one, uh, there, is, there is diffusion uh, between uh, diffusion of the particles from uh, one uh, place to the other place into another medium and um, uh, forces of attraction between uh, uh, the particles of matter. So these three are the important characteristics of matter or uh, important characteristics of the particles of matter, right? So based on these three important characteristics of uh, um, particles of matter, matter is divided into three important states. So matter is divided into three states. So they are they are the solids, liquids, and gases. So there are three states of matter. States of matter, states of matter, states of matter, they are three. Solids, liquids, and uh, gases. And gas. So these are the three uh, states of matter based on the um, these the characteristics of uh, particles that we have seen. Right. So next one. Uh, right. How are these uh, different? Why are these three different? So the main idea behind is again the characteristics of uh, the particles of the matter. So in solids, uh, the particles are very close to each other. So the particles are tightly packed. So there are large forces of attraction, right? So that is the thing. In liquids, uh, the particles are uh, loosely packed. So there are uh, more intermolecular spaces between the particles. And in gases, uh, the particles are very far, very far. So in solids, the particles are so tightly packed. The reason is uh, there's great intermolecular force of attraction. So intermolecular force of attraction are very high here. So due to that, they are tightly packed. So they only can vibrate at their uh, places uh, about their main position, but can never uh, become free and uh, leave. And uh, liquids, so we can say, uh, right, liquids, uh, uh, the particles are a little farther because uh, there are uh, weak forces of attraction between the particles of matter, uh, these uh, liquids. So they can move or roll over you can say and uh, so they are free to move so they can flow you can say right they can flow and the gases the particles are so loosely packed because they are very very weak forces of attraction there are very weak forces of attraction between the particles of gaseous substance and these particles they are, are moving with the great kinetic energy so kinetic energy of these particles are more here and they move randomly in all directions and so they are uh, uh, gaseous in uh, uh, state. So let us uh, compare the children a few more properties of uh, these uh, and uh, which bring about the difference between these states of matter uh, just because of uh, uh, in relation to those uh, three properties of particles of matter. So, um, so children, we have uh, these three states because of the uh, closeness, the greater force of, uh, force of attraction here, less force of attraction, and um, least force of attraction between the particles and the next they are tightly packed so intermolecular space is very less intermolecular space is little more than they are in solids and here in gaseous state uh, the intermolecular space is much more uh, so uh, that's and here uh, they cannot uh, diffuse uh, easily they cannot diffuse easily because the particles are not very free and here uh, they can diffuse that is they can move or they can flow whereas in gaseous state uh, the particles are very free so they can dis diffuse uh, easily and uh, so as they are tightly packed so if you try to press them they cannot be easily compressed so they don't change their shape in one way you can say and uh, in liquids uh, as there are spaces uh, few spaces uh, compression is a uh, to uh, it is possible to a very small extent and here gases can be compressed uh, to a great extent so we'll be talking about those things uh, in detail now and uh, bring out a difference between these uh, uh, three states of matter, right? So, children, based on these three uh, properties of the particles of the matter, uh, we have uh, to differentiate between these three now. So, there are some differences between. So, because of these, there are a few other properties, and we will see how they are different uh, 
these same properties they are different from uh, one state of matter to the other state of matter now look here children the intermolecular space in solids is uh, least least and in liquid uh, it is medium you can say medium and uh, the greatest or uh, highest highest so the greatest uh, distance the particles maintain here and now we are moving to the next children uh, in diffusion so solids uh, the particles of one solid cannot uh, move into the particles of another solid say uh, if i take uh, uh, a book here so i'm taking the book and uh, uh, the dust and these two are uh, uh, these two are uh, solids now if i keep uh, this uh, this solid uh, will not dissolve or otherwise will not dissolve into or into the book or book will not dissolve into the solid because uh, the particles are tightly packed and uh, due to the very high intermolecular uh, uh, force of attraction uh, uh, it is uh, not possible for them to diffuse uh, by themselves into the other medium right next uh, we move to uh, diffusion it is uh, least uh, least here and in liquid we know well that when we take a drop of blue and put it into water we have observed that uh, the blue has spread of uh, blue has spread is it not so when liquid is put into liquid uh, what happens is uh, liquids will diffuse say they diffuse so they exhibit uh, diffusion right next gases so if agarbatti was placed here and uh, in a moment you can when you are standing in a corner in a very small time uh, you could uh, smell the fragrance of that that reason is because the very high diffusion very high diffusion diffuse slowly here in liquid they diffuse slowly whereas in gas the diffusion is very high now if i take uh, if i take uh, the duster and try to press it hard press it very hard it won't change the shape because already the particles are so tightly packed that uh, there are no spaces so it is impossible for us to press so compressibility uh, is uh, least here least here and uh, in liquids as there are few spaces very little uh, compressibility is possible medium you can see or uh, no compressibility or medium so compressibility and gases uh, if you take a syringe children so what happens is if you draw some air into it and close the nozzle remove the needle that's important now uh, close the nozzle and try to press hard then you can see that that can be pressed so there is decrease in the volume under pressure so this is called compressibility so the compressibility of gases is very high very high right so we'll uh, we'll understand the utility of all these things in a minute children now okay right based on these uh, uh, we understand the shape now the shape of solids uh, is definite the reason is uh, uh, already the particles are so close uh, that they cannot be pressed they cannot be changed pulled whatever even if we try to it is not possible right okay so the shape is uh, it is having uh, a constant shape it's a constant shape constant shape otherwise you can write a definite shape that is a definite shape and the next when we go to the next one that is in liquids uh, uh, now you know well that if i take a liquid and uh, say 100 ml of water pour it into a well, water bottle it takes the shape of the water bottle and if i pour the same water 100 ml water into a jar or jar that will take uh, the shape of the jar and if i pour the same quantity of water into something else uh, it keeps changing its shape so it is not having a definite shape not definite shape is not definite and the next one and the gases as the particles are very loosely packed we know well uh, naturally we can understand that uh, gases uh, have uh, uh, no definite shape uh, like uh, no definite uh, shape uh, like uh, the uh, liquids now volume what is volume children we have understood that volume is the quantity of matter contained uh, uh, volume is the uh, the amount of space that uh, uh, matter occupies is it huh? so as the shape is definite it won't change so its uh, volume is a uh, definite so they have a definite volume solids have a definite volume and liquids as their uh, uh, particle space is more but still there is one uh, good thing about it a 100 ml liquid uh, when you pour into different vessels uh, it's not going to change its volume it may change its shape but it's not going to change its volume so it also is having a definite uh, volume but gases now when we come to gases uh, as we have seen uh, the volume of the gas the volume of the gas uh, is uh, not definite as we compress it uh, 
the volume keeps decreasing and if i release the piston the volume keeps increasing is it not so we can say that uh, the volume of gases is not uh, definite and uh, rigidity now we talk about rigidity if i try to compress uh, this uh, dust uh, try to beat it uh, hard uh, what happens is it's not going to get compressed but uh, it will try to resist the pressure or the forces or if i beat it hard uh, it's going to break ultimately is it not true so that's the uh, so this ability to withstand uh, force is called as uh, rigidity so they are highly rigid highly rigid rigid they are rigid highly rigid rigid right okay next and the liquids they are not rigid because the moment you pour liquid uh, it starts moving down so it's uh, not rigid uh, and gases they are always free to move and uh, they are not rigid either uh, the next one we have a uh, fluidity so um, so the solid it retains its shape so it's not going to flow uh, so it's not having fluidity whereas liquids and gases they have the ability to move or diffuse so we can say they have uh, fluidity so both are called as fluids what are they called fluids because they can flow from uh, uh, one place to another place so children let us uh, talk a little more about diffusion uh, that is uh, liquids uh, a li one liquid can diffuse into the other liquid and the solids uh, some of the solids which are soluble they can also dissolve in liquids and uh, gases uh, also dissolve in liquids now the reason uh, uh, i'm telling you is gases uh, they are some of the important gases like uh, oxygen carbon dioxide uh, they can dissolve in water and uh, what happens children because of that uh, the aquatic plants and animals are able to live so gases can diffuse into liquids now what about uh, gases so gases can diffuse into gases that's true so if a perfume is the perfume smell is coming and if you ignite an agarbati so after some time both of them they mix up and they produce a different uh, fragrance or uh, uh, smell so that's because of uh, diffusion of that gas and this gas into each other so gases diffuse and the water vapor water vapor that's a gas and that can uh, diffuse into the air okay right next uh, i also want to talk about uh, this compressibility children exceptionally compressibility of gases is so high uh, the reason I, I'll give you, uh, um, the reason is, okay, the interparticular space that we know, but uh, uh, the ex uh, exceptional, this is useful in uh, some of uh, our daily utilities like uh, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. LPG means liquefied petroleum gas. The gas that we use, it has uh, two important gases, propane, butane. They can, uh, uh, they can be used uh, for cooking, right, and lighting. And uh, these uh, gases, uh, what happens, you know, children, they can occupy a lot of volume if they are free at a room temperature. But how do they uh, get into our cylinder, right? So they are highly compressed because they have large spaces under high pressure, uh, the gas is compressed into the cylinder so that they can occupy a very small volume, right? The oxygen cylinders, the oxygen cylinders that uh, the people, um, the hospital people use, they also <coughs> have oxygen gas tightly compressed into the cylinder because uh, at room temperature the gas will occupy so much volume and to avoid uh, that uh, to decrease uh, that uh, the space uh, they compress it and keep it and uh, carry it so it's easily able to carry and the balloons that are blown by the um, the a person who roams around uh, uh, he has a helium gas balloon and uh, so helium gas in the cylinder that is also tightly packed with that uh, quantity of uh, gas uh, it's a very little quantity of gas but is highly compressed into uh, the cylinder and that is used by him in order to fill so many uh, balloons uh, children so this is how uh, we have seen the difference between uh, solid liquids and uh, uh, gases and uh, the reason for them and the exceptions uh, that we see so we also see certain other examples to exceptions children a little later so children, I'll also talk about uh, some exceptions like uh, say uh, the rubber band and the rubber band uh, is uh, a solid but as it stretches, uh, uh, as it, it can be stretched. So how can we consider it a uh, uh, solid if you ask me? The reason is uh, I call it a solid because uh, though it gets stretched out, uh, when you release it, it comes back. So it, it gains its original uh, uh, place. Under stress it uh, uh, expands but uh, under uh, again uh, the release of pressure it will uh, come back uh, to its uh, original place. So rubber band is a uh, solid. Now, uh, sugar, it flows, so like a liquid, but uh, it is a solid because uh, uh, when you actually look into the each crystal, 
we can say that uh, it is having a definite shape uh, okay now we are talking about the sugar crystal is it not children the sugar crystal uh sugar it can flow like uh, uh the uh flow like liquid but i say that is not uh, a liquid because uh, uh as a whole it looks like a liquid but uh, if you carefully look at us uh, each crystal if you take it and place it in a plate uh, what happens children it is not going to change its shape so uh it is actually a solid and similarly if we have a sponge so there's a sponge in my hand children and this sponge uh i can compress it uh, so it uh, it looks as if uh, it is getting compressed like a gas but uh uh and when i release uh, it again comes back to its uh, shape uh, so what is uh, the reason that this is getting compressed can you call it a solid then so yes i can call it a solid because uh, if you carefully observe uh, these uh, uh children so there are fine gaps there in between and that's filled with the uh, air so when we are compressing uh, we are actually compressing the gas or air in it uh, but not compressing the solid so solids are incompressible and the next uh, children we also talk about uh, uh, as we are talking about compressibility we'll just switch on to the same thing so children uh, have you heard about cng compressed natural gas compressed natural gas yes compressed natural gas is a uh, natural gas that's methane uh, and that methane is compressed and uh, used as fuel in uh, vehicles in buses so it's a non polluting uh, uh, fuel and uh, with a very high uh, calorific value so children today uh, we have concluded uh, our uh, part children about in the states of uh, matter and uh, now we will really uh, now we are going to just uh, recap children so the properties of um, matter uh, uh, sorry properties of uh, uh, the particles of the matter determine uh, uh, the difference in the solid liquid and gas uh, intermolecular space uh, diffusion and compressibility these are the three things uh, which will affect uh, the shape uh, volume rigidity fluidity of uh, uh, the solid liquid and uh, gas so looking at uh, the shape uh, we find that it's definite shape uh, uh, liquids don't have definite shape and uh, gases they don't have definite shape volume uh, liquids uh, solids have a uh, definite volume and uh, liquids uh, they don't have a definite they have definite volume but gases they don't have a definite uh, uh, volume and rigidity uh, solids are highly rigid and so they can break under very high pressure uh, or uh, force uh, but they will not yield to uh, yield to the force they don't get compressed and uh, looking at the liquid uh, that's not rigid uh, it can flow and uh, gas it is also not rigid but uh, um, solid and then coming back to fluidity uh, we see that uh, uh, fluids uh, the solid is not having the ability to flow that's not fluid and the next uh, we have a liquid uh, liquid it can flow and uh, the gas uh, it can also flow from the one place to one place now okay right all these four uh, important uh, uh, characteristic uh, which uh, characteristics which bring about the difference between solid liquid and gas uh, are due to these three properties we know we have heard so intermolecular space in solids is least uh, the next in uh, liquids it's medium and uh, gas is the greatest intermolecular space and they also can move so fast uh, they can exert pressure on uh, the containers into which uh, these are filled uh, and the next one uh, liquid uh, sorry i mean uh, diffusion solids uh, they cannot diffuse uh, uh, from uh, one place to another place into the solids uh, right so their diffusion is least and whereas uh, uh, liquids they can diffuse into uh, liquids uh, and the next one uh, diffusion in gases gases can diffuse uh, uh, from uh, one place to another place uh, that's why we can uh, smell the fragrance of uh, an agrobacter or roses or uh, some scent or perfume somewhere and compressibility uh, solids there already the particles are very close so compressibility is least and uh, in solid in liquids uh, as there are a few spaces between uh, uh, the particles uh, it is possible for us to uh, to some extent very small, small extent uh, compressibility is possible and uh, under high pressure right action uh, gases they are highly compressible because uh, the particles are very very far so uh, that is the reason why they are highly compressible so we have seen the utility of this lpg and uh, the next one the oxygen gas cylinders and the cng so these and the, the gas balloons which are uh, uh, helium balloons the flying balloons that are used uh, by the people right uh, and uh, children thank you very much for uh, uh, concentrating and um, after this uh, there will be a worksheet following uh, uh, and uh, you do that uh, worksheet and uh, bring it uh, when you come back uh, to school and we'll reward uh, you with uh, marks uh, thank you very much